Welcome to the Mill Creek Government Channel. I'm Sam Peterson. Today we're learning about the United Way of Erie County. Their mission is to mobilize resources to break the cycle of poverty and improve the community. You'll see this every day in what they do. Here with us today, we have Lori Ruth, the president of United Way. United Way's long-term vision is that the Erie region is a collaborative community of opportunity where all students succeed and all families thrive. Lori, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. So tell us a bit more about the United Way of Erie County's mission. So our mission is uh, very focused on breaking the uh, cycle of generational poverty in Erie County. Um, unfortunately, our community has one of the highest poverty rates in the Commonwealth uh, and has for quite some time. And we know that um, for us to really be a thriving community, we need to break that generational cycle. So tell me a bit about how families thrive in your mind, because I know that is in your mission statement. So I think families thrive when they are stable, uh, when they can um, have a life where they aren't worrying about uh, meeting their daily uh, basic needs, uh, that they can focus on you know, their child's education, mm -hmm. their um, ability to work and sustain uh, a family uh, without having to rely on uh, assistance from other uh, resources. And so really that's what we want families to do, to be independent, uh, to be able to uh, participate in our community uh, as healthy families. And uh, we know that we're going to only achieve that when um, children are successful in school and can get um, the jobs that are available in Erie. We know that there are a lot of manufacturers and others who are looking for employees. And unfortunately, uh, there is a big gap between uh, the um, individuals in the community who can fill those uh, positions. Mm -hmm. So kind of bouncing off of that, how would the United Way of today, like right now, how is it different than in years past? That's a great question because I think that most people, when they hear United Way, they still think of that old model of United Way, that we were the fundraiser in the community. We had a workplace campaign once a year, went out and raised as much money as we could and then designated it to other agencies doing good work in the community, but really isolated from each other. So kind of like an intermediary? Yes, very transaction, yeah. very transaction oriented. So um, now United Way of Erie County is a social impact organization with an issue focus. So going off, you're a social impact organization. Mm -hmm. So are you still a local social impact organization? Thanks for bringing that up because yes, um, in all United Ways are local. So there are approximately 1,100 United Ways across the country, but they are all local organizations. So United Way of Erie County is a 501c3. We're incorporated in uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We have a local board of directors. We determine our uh, local mission. And most important, the monies that are raised in Erie County stay in Erie County to um, support our mission to break the generational cycle of poverty. So you talked a bit about the generational cycle of poverty. So how do you work to address that? Um, three words, education, education, education. What was the fourth one? <laughs> We don't need to go to the fourth, but it would be education. Um, so we are very focused on um, helping students succeed and be academically successful. And we do that um, through our community school model and also through the Imagination Library, which is a, a free book program. But we want kids to uh, be successful academically uh, in school so that they can go on and either pursue higher education, they can go directly into the workforce, they can go into technical training, they can go into the military, but they're prepared to be self-sufficient um, adults. So kind of maybe, Maybe elaborate a bit more on the community schools model, because that, that does seem super interesting. I mean, everything you said, like, I just, I can't see a single person that wouldn't be behind that. So the community school model is, um, it's not new. It's been around for 25, 30 years, um, but it has really started to gain attention and attraction in other communities and nationwide, quite frankly, um, because it is successful. And what it does, essentially, the community school model looks at the non-academic barriers that low-income children face on a daily basis and targets them to remove them 
so that the child can get into school, focus, and be academically successful. So United Way partners with school districts to focus on those non-academic barriers, identify them, remove them by bringing resources into the school mm -hmm. buildings, which is very different. I, I always say we are rich in resources in our community. We have a lot of great organizations doing great work, but they're spread out throughout the county, throughout the city. They are not easy to access uh, necessarily, and also families and, and um, children may not be aware that they exist. So United Way partners with those organizations by and bring those resources into the school building so that it is easily accessible. And all of the community schools have a community school director, which is a United Way employee. Mm -hmm. That community school director, however, is embedded in the school. So for all intents and purposes, they are part of that school team. And, um, but they are focusing on those non-academic barriers so that the principal and the teachers can focus on what, they, what their specialty is, which is the academics, the curriculum. And so when you marry those two together, um, you get a more stable, supportive school environment um, for these low-income, disadvantaged students uh, so that they can excel. Because you know what? They're, they're all bright. They just need the opportunity. Absolutely. I, so I, I guess, like, I, I have a few questions about, like, just kind of the structure of it. Mm -hmm. um, so are community schools still part of, like, the public school system? Great question. And, and I assume people know that because we're in it uh, from day to day. Um, but, yes, we only work with public schools. And so uh, in the city of Erie, all of the elementary and all of the middle schools are community schools. We also have community schools in Union City, Girard, and Iroquois. And the um, resources that we bring, United Way brings, uh, United Way uh, serves as the backbone. So we provide technical assistance to the community school model in the school. So we have um, a, a data team that does a lot of evaluation so that the resources that are brought into a community school actually are addressing the needs of that particular school. So the model is the same, but it may look a little bit different depending on that school demographic. For a real easy example uh, of this is, um, you know, some of our district schools like Pfeiffer Burley, East, um, uh, McKinley, they have a high concentration of multiple languages. Mm -hmm. So this student population, you know, some may have up to 19, 20 languages being spoken. That can create huge barriers for those families if they can't communicate, if they don't know what's going on in the school. Well, the community school model in Union City or even Girard that issue is not going to be present because they don't have that population. So their priority in the, the language area and removing those barriers is going to look completely different from a school that has a high population of uh, English language learners. Gotcha. It's really smart. I mean, it's letting, this is how I understand it, so correct me if I'm wrong, but letting, like you said, the teachers, the principals, they focus on what they're good at. Mm -hmm education and you guys come in and just organize all the other resources and basically don't have them waste their time on things that they're they you know might not be the most inclined to do well you know I, I think that teachers and principals administrators have really been burdened over the past I don't know how many you know years with all of this other baggage that's being brought into school and they want their kids to succeed. So when they see a child that needs basic needs or may need mental or behavioral counseling, they want to help, but they don't have the resources. They have a full-time job already. So now with a team, and, and we, we partner, we're, we work very closely with the um, administration and the um, teachers and the school-wide uh, specialists in that building to bring in the resources that are needed. So it's a team effort. So each school has a community school leadership team. Um, we do, uh, throughout the year, we do focus groups, we do surveys with the parents, the teachers, and the students to get their input as well. It's not like you just go in and say, okay, this is what you need based on what we think. 
it is brought from that community, that school demographic, what are their needs that are really prohibiting that school population from being successful? And it's gonna look different, but the model and the approach is the same, and it's all data driven. So we track all of these indicators like attendance, um, behavior incidents, uh, things like that, so that we know whether the resources that are being brought in the school and the approach is working if it is not, if we aren't seeing those indicators change, then we revisit it and say, okay, what's not working? What do we need to change? Your resources could be better spent elsewhere. Correct, yeah, correct. Absolutely. You mentioned the Imagination Library. Talk a bit more to that. So the Imagination Library is a free book program uh, for children from the time they're born until their fifth birthday. And uh, it's open to any child in Erie County uh, within that age and their parent or their guardian just need to sign them up and they start receiving a free high quality book every single month that is mailed to their home. So if they start by, when they are born, by the time they're five, they have their own library of 60 terrific books. The books are selected uh, and reviewed annually. Uh, it's run uh, through the Dollywood Foundation. Uh, that's paid uh, through donations uh, through United Way. So United Way of Erie County is a partner with the Dollywood Foundation to support this program. Um, and uh, it costs about $275,000 or $300,000 a year to run this program, but we know it works because we know that if kids get those books into their hands, into their homes, that the uh, reading increases, the verbal interchange uh, increases, and the language, so that when these kids enter kindergarten, they are way ahead in terms of concepts about print and early literacy skills. They're being set up to really succeed in school because literacy skills um, are the foundation for all learning, and so we want our kids to enter kindergarten ready and eager to learn, and the Imagination Library is doing that. Since we launched in 2013, well over a million books have been distributed in Erie County, and uh, we know it's working. We've done research around it uh, in our community and know that the kids that are uh, enrolled in the Imagination Library are getting, uh, you know, really a step up in terms of being ready for success in school. In all the research I've done, I reading and early learning in general before kindergarten is absolutely crucial to childhood development. You think Erie County does a good enough job of that? Um, well, we're doing what we can. Um, we know that, you know, there are other things like uh, PNC has uh, um, Grow Up Great, which is focused on early literacy. Um, there are scholarships for children to get into uh, high quality uh, early learning centers. Um, so that's really important. But you're exactly right, because by the time a child is two, three, four years old, their brain is pretty much developed. So um, we want that brain development to happen uh, in a positive, correct way so that the brain is wired uh, for learning. Uh, it, and we know that reading and literacy helps that brain development with a child. So honestly, other than keeping that child healthy and safe, reading to a child, there's nothing more important than reading with your child as they are developing. So reading with your child, I mean, like one way to do that would be the uh, Dolly Parton Imagination Library. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously that is, as you mentioned, um, funded by just the public and through your, um, through your drives. Mm -hmm. So if someone wanted to give, how would they? So they can go to our website, unitedwayerie.org, um, and we have um, all of the information uh, there. Um, we have a wonderful administrative uh, person who's the lead on the Imagination Library, Joanna Peterson, and she is just absolutely passionate about the program. She works with the parents or the guardians to help get them signed up if they are having challenges, but you can sign up online. Uh, you can uh, give us a call at 814-456-2937. Uh, uh, talk to Joanna and um, when um, the, both of the uh, hospitals that um, we, we work very closely with, with UPMC, Hammett McGee's Women's Hospital in, in St. Vincent, they um, uh, try to get the babies signed up before they even leave the hospital so that the kids start getting the uh, books right away. So one more program that you do is the uh, 211 program. Can you describe that a bit? Sure, absolutely. So 211 is United Way's helpline. 
It is open 24-7, 365, and it is easily accessible uh, either, you know, online, through your phone, um, text, uh, you know, uh, to 211. And uh, the great thing about 211 is that it is a one-stop shop for help for anyone in the community at any time. And it doesn't matter what you're dealing with, call 211 and you are uh, connected with a resource, a United Way resource navigator. That United Way resource navigator is trained to obviously help with the immediate problem. And a, a lot of the issues uh, in our community are around utilities and, and paying for utilities. So someone may call up and say, you know what, I think my utilities are gonna be cut off at the end of the month, I don't know what to do. Yes, we can help you with that. We will you know, get you with the resources that you need. How is your housing? How is your health? Do you have children? Do you have elderly? So they are trained to ask probing questions so that that individual is not just getting this one-off help for this immediate crisis. Let's see if we can get you stable holistically. Do you have other issues? Because again, we have a plethora of resources in our community. People just don't know how to access them. And so with 211, it's, all, it's a database we have more than 700 uh, local agencies providing more than 2,000 programs of assistance. And so the resource navigator can access that database, put that person in touch, direct con connection with the resources that they need. What's great also is that all that information goes into the database, so if that individual calls back in three, four, five months or a year later, they have a history so that if it's a different resource navigator, it's like, oh, I see that you were having issues with this. How is that? Are you okay with this? Are you stable with that? So 211, honestly, is a lifesaver for our community. Absolutely. I, I wasn't aware of how extensive that was. I mean, that sounds like a hard job. You got to pull from a list of every single uh, nonprofit that can help. That's, yes. yeah, that's, that's incredible. Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a great resource for our community. All right, so how can people best stay up to date with everything that you guys do with all of these fantastic programs that you spoke about today? So we um, are very active on social media. So if you are uh, into social media, you can find us, you know, a Facebook um, and, you know, uh, Instagram. You can also go to our website, unitedwayerie.org. Uh, we have uh, newsletters. You can um, give us a call at any time. We love talking to constituents and, and just the general public about our work, answering any questions that they might have. Um, so, um, you know, we're pretty much an open book. So uh, love to have involvement and engagement with the community. Awesome. Well, Lori, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, to all of you that tuned in, thank you for watching. We learned a lot about the United Way and the fantastic programs they do for the community. So stop on the website, uh, give what you can, and don't be afraid to dial that 211. Till next time, Mill Creek, thank you very much.